it's an honor. It's, um, that's an understatement to say. This is a huge honor um, to be standing before you uh, today. It's an honor to be included with a group of guys, a group of men that are considered to be the best of the best in the history of the Canadian Football League. It's also very humbling to be standing here today. Humbling because I'm, I'm standing here by myself, but I know I didn't get here by myself. There's so many people that have m helped to make this day possible. I want to start out first by thanking God because it was God that um, enabled that gave me the ability to do the things that I was able to do on the football field. It was God that always watched over me. It was he that would turn what looked like a bad situation for me into a blessing. What looked like a demotion for me was his way of preparing me for my next promotion. In my life, he made the improbable probable, the unlikely he made likely, and the impossible he made possible. Me standing here today is proof of that. So I want to say again, thank you, God, for blessing me. It, it was Commissioner uh, Mark Cohen who called to tell me that I was being inducted this year. And after our conversation, I had two thoughts that immediately ran through my mind. The first being, well, I guess this means no coming back for me out of retirement. <laughs> and, and the next was, what the heck am I going to talk about on this stage when I stand at, on, the, um, on, on the stage during the induction ceremony? You know, what do you say when you have so many stories to tell? so many memories to share, so many people to thank, so many points to make. What do you say when you were blessed with a 15-year career and are given only 10 minutes to talk about it? I want to start, well, let me start with the obvious by thanking the, the people who voted me into the Hall of Fame the selection committee, Bob Harper, George Black, Daryl Davis, Bob Irving, Bill Tidball, Peter Martin, and Brian Hall. And two greats of the Hall of Fame, Montreal's former tight end, Peter De La Riva, and Ottawa's former quarterback, Russ Jackson. Thank you, man, so very much. You don't know how happy you made my mother. Unlike these uh, two CFL legends that spent their entire career with uh, one team, I was a transient, bouncing around, from team, um, bouncing around trying to find a home. And I was so pleased that the Canadian Football League gave me an opportunity to make a home. A long time ago, I started out with a great big home at Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton. I was there for about three weeks before Coach Lancaster, God rest his soul, said, Mike, we're moving you from your home on the playing field at Commonwealth to a new, very, very small home close by called the practice roster. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't like this new address too much. So I asked Tracy Ham, who was a quarterback at that time, what he thought I should do. Now, I had just met Tracy about three or four weeks before this, but I wanted his advice. He was a little older than I and a leader on the team. He seemed like somebody who can depart some football wisdom on me. So I said, Tracy, man, they're trying to put me on the practice roster. You know I should be starting. What do you think I should do? Yeah, I was arrogant back then. <laughs> there was a short pause, and I'm waiting for this great football wisdom from this veteran quarterback. And he says, how much is your contract for? So I told him the dollar amount. Then he said, how much are they paying you to be on a practice roster? Well, I said, $500 a week. Well, 
I never did get any great football wisdom from Tracy that day. Maybe because he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> he did eventually tell me that I should st um, stick around, but I decided to take a window seat back to LA instead. Over the years, I did get some great advice from Tracy Ham. Tracy doesn't know this, I never told him this, but uh, he was a big brother I never had, but always wanted. He was the one who taught me by his examples what, what it takes to be a professional both on and off the field. He was the one that believed in my talent long before anyone else in this league did. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Thank you, Tracy. Three weeks in Edmonton, this was how my unlikely road to the Hall of Fame began. Next stop, Sacramento. The CFL in the, US, in the USA. It doesn't get any better than this, I thought. <laughs> I'm gonna make my home on, at Hornet Stadium now. Well, Kay Stevenson, the head coach, he had other thoughts. His thoughts were, Mike, if you wanna make your home here, you're gonna have to play fullback. The first thing that comes to my mind is, no way, I'm a running back. Again, I was a little arrogant right there. <laughs> but then I remembered, Mike, you just bought a brand new BMW. <laughs> I better give this fullback thing a try. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out for me for about a year. Then I was evicted from my home at Hornet Stadium and traded to Baltimore. The unlikely road to the Hall of Fame continues. This was probably the roughest time in my career. This was the first time in my professional career that I ever wanted to give up. I can remember as clear as if it was yesterday, we had just started camp, and I was in my dorm room talking with my mother on the telephone. As always, my mother would ask me how I'm doing. Usually I would say, fine, even when I wasn't. But this time she asked, and I said, I'm not doing too good. I think this will be my last year playing football. I said, Mama, I'm, I'm tired of bouncing around the country. I'm tired of working so hard year after year. It seems like I'm working hard for nothing. I realize what I'm capable of doing on the football field, but nobody else does. I'm tired of people telling me what I can't do. Well, my mother told me whatever I decided to do with her was fine. And then she told me what she had told me so many times before. Michael, she said, you can do anything you put your mind to as long as you work hard and pray harder. I told her, I always pray. I'm gonna work hard while I'm here. I'm gonna make my home at Memorial Stadium now, but this is my last year. Remember when I said that God watches over me? Remember when I said, what initially looks like a bad situation, he would turn into a blessing. Well, God blessed me with the biggest offensive line in professional football <laughs> that year. <laughs> Sharp Pardarnish, Keith Ballard, better known as Big Easy, Nick Subas, Mark Dixon, and Big Neil Fort. He blessed me with a multi-talented fullback, Robert Drummond, and the best quarterback that I ever played with in the CFL. Tracy Ham. I'm so glad I didn't give up. I'm glad I didn't listen to the critics that said I wasn't good enough. Instead, I used their criticism as my motivation, both on and off the football field. Proving my critics wrong was important to me, not because I cared what they thought, I didn't. You see, I didn't play hard for the people that didn't believe in me. I played hard for the people that did. My critics just made my focus more intense. My critics were the ones that gave me the targets to shoot for. My critics said, Mike's too small. Mental note to self, 
run over every defensive player on the football field. <laughs> My critics down south said the standard for excellence for a running back is 1,000 yards. Mental note to self, rush for 2,000 yards. <laughs> My critics said, yeah, Mike had a good year last year, but he won't do it again. Mental note to self, win MVP. In 1994, when I was nominated for MVP, my critics said, yeah, he's up for MVP, but he won't win. Mental note to self, I'm up against Doug Flutie. <laughs> They're probably right. <laughs> My, my doubters unlo unknowingly gave, gave me my goals to shoot for. My supporters unknowingly gave me the reason why I would achieve them. Throughout my career, I've had many supporters, and most of them don't know that they are the reasons for my success. Danny Machocha. Danny Machocha, head coach for the Edmonton Eskimos, um, was first at Montreal. Before Danny even had a coaching position in Montreal, I think they just got him off the street and said, go in here and watch Mike, keep him calm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even think they paid him. <laughs> Poor Danny. Um, but Danny, o over the years, Danny, would sit down with me, um, watch film with me, force me to be a student of the game. I sat down with him. He believed in me. He helped me to be a better football player on the football field. He helped me grow as a football player. It was his belief in me that made me want to try harder on the football field. Danny don't, doesn't know that he was the reason for my success. Jim Pop, who believed in, enough in me to make a trade with Sacramento, even though he probably traded a roll of tape and some, some bubble gum for me, it was a great trade. He believed in me. He, he was someone that would go to bat for me when, again, my critics said, it's time to make a move. He would say, no, we're keeping Mike. Mike is going to produce for us. Mike is going to help us win. His belief in me made me work harder, made me want to do more. Jim Pop doesn't know that he's the reason for my success. Bob and Lisa Wettenhall. Now, a long time ago, when I first met Bob and Lisa, they invited me um, up to Montreal, and I had a meeting with them even before I signed. And uh, they said that, um, well, we're going to turn this thing around. We, we have probably 27 people in the stands right now, but we're going to turn this thing around. Um, and they wanted to sign me. They showed belief in me. Not only that, 10 years or so ago, Bob was bold enough to say, when you're in the Hall of Fame, I'm going to be there. Whatever it takes, I'm going to be there. I saw Bob earlier today, and the first thing he says, Mike, I told you I was going to be here. I told you I was going to be here. You know, Bob believed in me. Bob doesn't know that he's the reason for my success. My mother, for everything, she believed in me harder than anybody. She wanted more for me than I wanted for myself. My mother was there for me from day one. She took me 
to track meets and football practice, she is the one that told me that God answers prayers. She's the one that said, again, that I can do anything I put my mind to. There's too much to list for my mother, but she believed in me. I think she believed in me because she has strong faith and she prays and she believes, but she believed in me. I don't think my mother knows, but she's the reason for my success. My father, <laughs> this is, yeah, my, my, my father, it, this is funny. When, when he's up here in Canada, I can, I can hear him talking about me to other fans. I can hear people telling him stories about me, stories that he's not aware of because he lives in the States. And I can see the pride in his eyes. Um, he's somebody that always believed in me. And I don't think he knows that he's the reason for my success. And I'm going to keep going on and on. Lester Smith, my old roommate, my friend. Now, I don't know if you believed in me. But, but Lester is the one that dared me to do something that was most instrumental in my life. And that is to get out of the car and go talk to this beautiful young lady that was driving down the street. <laughs> Lester said, did you see her? in that car, and he dared me to get out and talk to her. This girl ended up being my wife. So, Lester, thank you. <laughs> Kenya, my wife. She has been through so much as with a lot of athletes, wise. They have to put a lot of things on hold because of what we do. And she has been so supportive in all that I've done. She's been a great wife, a wonderful supporter, a wonderful mother. She did everything that she had to do when I was up here in Canada and she was at home studying to get her PhD and raising a, a kid six months out of the year when I spent my six months up, up here. And I can't even begin to tell you how much I love her and I wanna thank her for the support that she's given me and I don't know if she knows that she's the reason for my success. Kenya, I mean, I'm sorry, Isaiah and Jordan <laughs> my two beautiful children. When I look in their eyes, I want everything for them. And I know I need to be the example that they need to see. It's, again, too much to say about them. I just know that they make me want to do great things because I want them to see me and know that they can do, just like my mother told me, whatever they put their mind to, that they also can do. I don't know if they know that they are the reason for my success. And last, but certainly not least, all the cheering fans of the CFL, especially in Montreal and Edmonton. You guys cheered for me. You guys supported me. You guys were there for me in so many ways. Even when I was playing against the teams, the fans always showed me great respect and I found that to be a pretty cool thing. And listening to the cheers all across Canada, 
I want to tell all the people, all the fans of Canada and the CFL, if you didn't know it, you're the reason for my success. So now you know why I worked so hard, why I worked out so long, why I played with such passion and was ulti ultimately able to achieve so much. I wasn't doing it for me. I was doing it for you.